guys, welcome back to my channel, How to Decorate Like a Pro, Designer Secrets, Tips, Tricks, and Hacks. My name is Lori, and this is episode 11, How to Hang Artwork Like a Professional Designer. So I know this can be confusing for people. You get a big blank wall, and you have some art pieces you love, and you're thinking, where do I hang this so it looks good and does it look like you need to strain your neck to see it because it's too high or you miss it all together because it's too low. That's a little extreme, but you get my drift. So the most important number one thing to talk about is where you want your center point of your artwork to be. And the average height of a person, um, I line sight line, whatever you want to call it, is 60 inches. So you want the center point of your artwork to be at 60 inches. So if you have a single piece of art and you stand back, you look at the wall, you want the middle point to be 60 inches. If you have two pieces or three pieces, doesn't matter, you want the midpoint to be at 60 inches. So that's pretty simple. And we're going to talk about the nuances of other scenarios. So that is number one tip right there. 60 inches to the midpoint is your golden rule. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about how to hang artwork the right way. Like a professional, you want to always have it be approximately two thirds the width of whatever the pieces that it is over top of. So for instance, on the top left photo, you can see that those uh, three pictures are actually wider than the headboard that they are over. So it's overwhelming for the piece of furniture below it. So you don't wanna do that. So the uh, blue sofa photo, you can see that those two pictures in total are approximately two thirds the width of the sofa. So again, it's not perfect math. I don't expect anybody to get out their tape measures, just kind of eyeball it. I mean, I guess you can get your tape measure out if you want, but I probably would. But anyway, I don't expect that. Just eyeball it and say, yep, that looks like a good balance, that the artwork is about two thirds the width of the furniture piece it is hanging over. Another thing to remember is you want approximately six to eight inches of wall space showing between the top of the furniture piece and the bottom of the piece of art. That way it doesn't look too high or too low. It's a good visual height for pieces of art to be hung. And that being said, on the blue sofa photo, you can see you want about three to four inches of blank space in between the two pieces of art. Now, if they are smaller scale pieces, which we'll see here in a second, maybe one to two inches, but for pieces that are a bit, little bit larger in scale like these, you want about three to four. Top right, same thing applies to bedrooms. You want your artwork to be about two thirds the width of the bed in this case, and six to eight inches above the headboard. And the bottom right photo, same once again, two thirds width of the piece of furniture that it is over. I feel like I'm beating this into your head, but you'll definitely remember. And it's about six to eight inches above that credenza. And next, we're going to talk about collage artwork. This can be a little tricky to do, but there is a hack on the top left. You can cut out any kind of scrap paper, um, even paper bags, like from the grocery store the approximate size of the pieces that you want to hang and use painter's tape. That blue tape is painter's tape. Make sure you do that or you'll be really sad because you'll have to repaint your wall when the tape peels the paint off the wall. So again, use the shapes that are cut out to determine where you're going to hang these items 
and you can move them around obviously and try different things. And what I do is take photos of them as I move them and then take another photo. That way you don't forget, oh yeah, I liked the third one I did, but I don't remember what that was. So again, a little secret there, take photos of all your options. So then on the photo below it with the black and white frames, when you do decide what your layout is going to be, you want to maintain a visual weight from side to side to create balance. And you'll notice that a really easy trick to doing this is using the same size frames on each side and then working around that. And they're all in alignment. If you see the three on the bottom, the top of the frame aligns, the two above that, the bottom of the frames align. So that's a super easy way to look at it. And also side note, you'll see that there's two on top, three on the bottom. That's um, just, you don't have to do it that way, but that's a really good way that your visual weight will work out better because you don't want the heavier looking three pieces to be above the lighter scale looking two pieces. So if you're going to do an odd number, which you should do unless there are some cases where you don't. But in this case, um, have your fewer pieces above the wider pieces. Hopefully that was clear. That was a little wonky description. But anyway, on the last picture on the right, um, you want to maintain spacing width between all the frames. And like I said, on the other photo, um, on the other set of photos, those were about three to four inches in width spacing between photos when it's smaller scale, like the black and white, and even the ones on the right with the white frames, maybe one to two inches spacing, just because it's a smaller uh, pieces of artwork and it looks better. So let's talk about fireplace walls. Not everybody has a fireplace, but maybe you have a big bookcase or something that's centered and then you need to hang something on each side of it. So on the top left, you can use similar size pieces, even though they're completely different. You see that you've got a leaning piece of artwork on the right, and then you're hanging something on the left, that circular framed mirror. The best way to do this and have it look good is to center um, them on each other. So basically the center point of the mirror is at the center point of the piece of art side to side. So you have, once again, balance, which is super important. On the fireplace below it, you can see that there are a collage sets of botanicals and in this case, you want to keep your spacing all the same, just like before we talked about. And the spacing is actually going to be a smaller width again because they're smaller size frames. And you want to keep the distance from the ceiling to the top of the collage and the floor to the bottom of the collage the same and obviously center them side to side on each piece of wall. On the top right, one of the easiest foolproof ways to hang art on each side of a fireplace is to be symmetrical and duplicate the art. Not that it's identical on each side, but it's four of the same set. So again, you go to the six to eight inches between the credenza piece and the bottom of the frame. And then since these are smaller scale frames, two to three inches between the two art pieces. And on the bottom right, again, this one is easy peasy as well, where you've got one, two, three pieces of art. You always want the larger piece in the center, and that's going to be your focal point along with the fireplace and then two smaller pieces that aren't quite as colorful on either side. And you wanna center the pieces all on each other. This one is kind of an optical illusion because the side panels are recessed, but those frames are aligned side to side. The center of the big one lines up with the center of the smaller ones 
on each side. And we'll look at this next one. So staircases can be really tricky on how to hang pictures or art. So I'm going to show you a couple of options and some do's and don'ts. So the top left is a don't. Um, there's just too much going on. It's really cluttered looking and there's no standout items, which when you do this, then things get lost and become just unimportant looking. So that is a don't. To the right of that is a do. Yes, you use fewer pieces and you use larger scale frames. So these aren't all portraits. Some are drawings, some are, uh, they are portraits. Some are landscapes, it looks like. So they're different items, just like there's different items on the left. However, they do have the frame size and not frame size, frame thickness size in common. And they're grouped very neatly and there are very few pieces compared to the one to the left of it. So you, your items stand out more. It's more interesting to look at. You can stop and kind of in a minute, see all of them without having to spend 15 minutes on the stairwell to the left looking at each of those items. Then on the bottom left is another don't, and I'm sorry if this is you that did this, but let's just talk about it as a learning, learning exercise. In this one, it's a don't because the pictures are too tiny. I mean, some of these might even be, I don't know, four by sixes. So the scale of the photo, the people in the photo are getting super tiny. And when you're standing at the bottom of the stairs, if you look up at the landing, you're not even going to be able to make out what those pictures are. So don't do this. It's too cluttered. The pictures are too tiny to even have any kind of visual impact. There's just too many of them. So to the right of that, you are going to nicely stagger three same size frames and use a larger scale picture. This is a much more impactful way to display your family photos or whatever you want to put there. Um, so remember it is quality, not quantity. And the final tip to the far right top is that landings are a great place for a gallery wall. It may be family photos, it may be candid photos, it may be, looks like these are architectural images, but because they're all matted in the same size frames and the spacing is equidistant, then it works. It's a nice grouping of similar images and it gives you something to look at when you're going up and down the stairs. So hopefully that helped and now you feel more confident in how to hang your art and we're going to have another episode coming up soon on alternative things to hang on your wall besides just artwork and that's going to be a super exciting one. I love to come up with creative ideas that aren't necessarily what you're going to see everywhere you go. So if you like what you saw, which I hope you did, and it was helpful to you, please, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day.